अनुसंधान ऑल गुजरात इंटीग्रेटेड क्लासरूम सैटेलाइट ना माध्यम थी जोड़ती कड़ी इतले संधान गुड मॉर्निंग माय सेल्फ इज मिसेस पूनम वलेरा फ्रॉम श्रेयकदोशी महिला कॉलेज जामनगर टुडे आई एम टू डिस्कस द पोएम द सॉलिटर रेपर रिटन बाय द ग्रेट प्रीचर ऑफ द नेचर दैट इज विलियम वर्ड्सवर्थ I would like to say that William Wordsworth has impresses his readers by imaginative and philosophical aspect regarding nature. He has given us a particular idea to look at the nature in a very different and passionate manner. This is somewhat about a brief background regarding William Wordsworth. Born April seven, seventeen seventy, Wordsworth House. It means, and Wordsworth House, and it is situated in United Kingdom. In eighteen fifty, on the day of twenty third April, this great personality died. He was English by nationality, and Dorothy Wordsworth. and Christopher Wordsworth were his siblings actually Dorothy Wordsworth was quite near to William Wordsworth so far as education taken by Wordsworth was there he took took his education at Hawkshead Grammar School and now William Wordsworth is the pioneer of the prime mover of romanticism as for example we can say that being a romantic poet wordsworth has also applied a different norms of romanticism a different features of romantic poetry in this very poem also which we will to discuss in detail this is just a glimpse about major works of william wordsworth first one is an evening walk it means ordain and number of poetry is also there today our main concentration will be on the solitary reaper actually the solitary reaper is such a delightful lyric by wordsworth we can get the proper idea how a great and true lover and preacher of nature he was so this poem is quite suggestive of inner aspect of inner soul of wordsworth beauty because if any poet is filled with such kind of beauty regarding nature then her her or his soul directly starts to revel more and more and at last it is converted into poetry itself the same thing is quite applicable in this poem this poem was written by wordsworth on november 5 1805 1805 it got published in 1807 and in the volume it is titled as two volumes actually two volumes is the name of a book in which a number of collected poems by william wordsworth have been included this is about our today's topic it means our today's poem the solitary reaper which has become a more and more famous and through this poem also wordsworth has got more and more name and fame no doubt always it is considered that uh, it was lyrical ballads which gave a true identity to wordsworth but each poem has added some word each poem has enriched the field of his name and fame one of them is the solitary reaper actually 
This poem is based on the experience of author and friend Thomas Wilkinson, who were on his journey, or we can say that at that time William Wordsworth was just roaming here and there in the region of Scotland. Actually, it is written in the book Tours to the British Mountains that once uh, Wordsworth and his friend Thomas Wilkinson were roaming here and there in Scotland and suddenly they came across a girl, a solitary reaper and then as a result Wordsworth could write down this poetry. Before going through any evaluation process of this poem, it is quite necessary for us to know the proper number of stanzas and etc. Actually, this poem is composed of 32 lines and divided into 4 stanzas. It means each stanza is ended with 8-8 eight, eight lines will be there. So far as the first stanza is discussed, it is the introduction of the poets encountering a solitary Scottish rustic girl who was ripping and singing a melancholic song which deeply fascinated William Wordsworth. Actually, this first stanza gives us the reason gives us the idea, gives us the matter to understand that what was happened there that this poem had been resulted by William Wordsworth. So, here it can be said that Scottish rustic girl was responsible to emerge in Wordsworth's heart a different kind of realm emotions, passions and love and at last she became responsible for this great poem Solitary Reaper. In the second stanza, the poet softly compared the melody to the sweet voice of Nightingale and to the song sung by Kaku in spring. Here. In the regard of the word nightingale, I recall one of the poems written by Kitts also, Ode to the Nightingale. Actually, in that very ode, Kit has expressed or Kit has admired the sweet song of nightingale. But here the matter is somewhat different. Here William Wordsworth is to express or is to compare the voice of that solitary reaper with nightingale and he has compared it in such a way that he has expressed her voice more and more melodious than nightingale too. In this regard, it can be said that this poem by Wordsworth, it means the solitary reaper anticipates kids ought to the nightingale. The third stanza speaks of the poet's speculation of the content of the song which was sung in Scottish dialect, it means a foreign language, whether it was about some old sad matters or some sufferings of present time. Here I would like to mention one thing regarding author and the poet, whenever any poet becomes too much happy. Whenever any poet enjoys some different phases of his life, as for example, love, relationship, courtship, happy union, etc., at that time his heart directly prompts himself to write more and more. The same thing also happens whenever any person falls in some circumstances or becomes the victim of sad circumstances or dark clouds of the life. 
the same thing has also happened with Wordsworth. Whenever Wordsworth was roaming in this Scotland and came to know or came to see this solitary reaper at that time, he could not stop his heart to thrill more and more and as a result the poetry was there. The same case is also visible in the case of this girl who is ripping alone in the field. No doubt she is quite busy in her activity, her chorus, but whatever is sung by her is having some melancholic aspects. We can say that it is melancholic strain of the poem because more and more repetition of the thought is dependent on this very melancholic strain. It is also necessary to suggest that the language in which that girl was reciting the song was a Scottish dialect and Wordsworth was not able to understand this Scottish dialect. And in spite of all this, he could write down a poetry on this girl. It is only due to her enchanting, bewitching, magnificent voice with which or we can say that by which Wordsworth's heart was throbbed more and more and as a result her, his heart prompted him to write a poetry on this solitary reaper. So, this solitary reaper is revealing a sad matters or some suffering of present time and etc. Wordsworth is not quite sure about all this because he does not know this Scottish dialect. So, he assumes everything that uh, either this girl is in is sad or is very happy or is mourning on a present condition etc. But whatever is her situation, she is her voice is very magnificent, her voice is more and more sweeter than Nightingale 2. This is about the third stanza. The third stanza speaks of the poet's speculation of the content of the song which was sung in Scottish dialect. Before few minutes I told about all this that content of the dialect is not very important for Wordsworth. He tried hard to understand all this, but he failed because of not becoming familiar regarding this Scottish dialect. But it did not matter for the poet. Whatever attracted Wordsworth was her melodious tone. First stanza serves as a conclusion in which the poet emphasizes the lingering effect of the music on him. Here the word lingering effect is quite important. In this regard, I would like to share that the solitary reaper has sung a song. It is over, but its enchanting effect is not over. So far as geographical setting is concerned, that was the region having valley. It means valley region is there. So, any utterances is echoed there. In this sense also, the song becomes endless, but for the part of Wordsworth heart, the song become endless in that way that in her core region of heart, he is just remembering, remembering and experiencing and experiencing that uh, melodious tone of that solitary reaper and this effect has been responsible for Wordsworth to express everything in this poem. This is the first stanza originally written by Wordsworth. It starts like that, behold her single in the field, yon solitary highland lass. Here highland lass is a word properly used for a girl living in Scotland. So, Wordsworth request 
every passers by not to stop her. Actually, she is ripping the grants and binding the grants alone in the fields. But in addition to doing addition to do all this work, she is singing a very melodious song. To see this, Wordsworth has decided not to stop her, not to disturb her. That is why he requests every passers by not to behold her. Other two lines ripping and singing by herself stop here all gently pass. It means if you want to pass from here, then please pass here from gently without disturbing her, without making any noise. Otherwise, her song will be disturbed and that melodious tone will not be glorified in a true sense. So, this is the core idea about the emerging of any song. Here, it can be also applicable that spontaneous overflow because as we know in Dericker Ballard's Wordsworth have, has given us a theory of uh, poetic diction and etcetera and is written that spontaneous overflow of feelings. So, indirectly Wordsworth does not want to disturb that spontaneous overflow of feelings of this young lady who is ripping the grants alone in the field. So, this here also we can find the theme of solitude also. The same is going on in the fifth line of the poem that is why it starts with the word alone. Alone she cuts and binds the grain. It means every chorus has to do by her by single hand. No one is present there to help her in her chorus and sings a melancholy strain. O listen for the well profound is overflowing with the sound. It means the surrounding atmosphere is like that that cuts a valley. So, whenever this girl is singing such a melodious song at that time her voice is converted into echo the whole valley is thrilled by this melodious sound and sings the melancholy strain all listen for the well profound is overflowing the sound. So, valley is filled with such a melodious song. So, whole valley has been converted into a beautiful region. First first becomes stunned and very stilled there. He does not and he cannot move an inch also. This is about the second stanza. No nightingale did ever chant more welcome notes to wavy bands of travellers in some sadi haunt among Arabian sands. The first line is quite suggestive. As I told you at the very upset of my lecture that uh, this poem Solitary Reaper anticipates kids or to the nightingale. It can be said that because here Wordsworth has compared nightingale, nightingale's tune or we can say that here Wordsworth has compared a melodious song of this solitary reaper with the sweet voice of nightingale. But this comparison is not give us the glimpse of equality because this solitary reaper's sound is more and more melodious than nightingale too. That is why Wordsworth has written that no nightingale is able to emerge or to create such a chanting effect, such an enchanting effect or to create such a melodious tone. So, this kind of melodious tone also suggests how innocent, how pure the lady was. 
because whenever purity is there, whenever innocence is there, then and then also this kind of melancholic song has been expressed by the person. Next two lines will be there of travelers in some sadi haunt among Arabian sands. Here actually there is a reference of Arabian sands. As we know that Arabian sand verse gives us some hint about desert. In desert area, no shed is possible to get. So, whenever travelers are coming from all this Arabian sand, at that time some wavy bands are ready to give them solace or we can say that to give them solace, give them comfort, give them some peace etc. The same function is performed by the melodious voice of this lady here. It means whenever any travelers or any passers are just going here and there and if they listen this melodious song then their whole tiredness will be invisible and the persons will get quite fresh and the same has been in the case of William Wordsworth. Another line a voice so thrilling never was heard. Here thrilling word is quite suggestive of the reverberation of sound. It means this girl has no doubt completed her song to be recited, but its thrilling effect is still there, reverberation of sound is still there because there is a valley that is that is why her sound is echoed and the repetition of the same sound is going on and on. Then Wordsworth has said in spring time from the cuckoo bird breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest Hebrides. Here Hebrides is the name of one of the islands situated near northern or western side of Scotland. Actually in this island there is quite oasis and when oasis will be there on some particular day Nantigal is visible otherwise Nantigal cannot be seen in that area. And whenever Nantigal is visible every person coming from this Hebrides gets solace in the same manner in spring time from the cuckoo bird. It means cuckoo gives us her melodious song or her melodious voice in the spring time, but here William Wordsworth wants to say that this solitary reaper is singing her song in such a melodious way that it has overcome the melody of cuckoo also. It means William Wordsworth has compared the melody of the song with two different birds namely nightingale and then with cuckoo. Now, we will about to discuss the third stanza of the poem. <coughs> Will no one tell me what she sings? Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old, unhappy, far off things and battles long ago. The first line is quite suggestive, it is also suggestive of of the thing that Wordsworth does not understand the language spoken by this girl of Scotland. It means she is revealing her melodious song in Scottish dialect which was a quite foreign language for Wordsworth. That is why he has written that will no one tell me what she sings. It means due to not knowing the language or this foreign Scottish language, Wordsworth cannot get a proper idea that what is actually the subject matter of the song. It may be about unhappy days, it may be about far off things, it may be about battles which were fought a long ago and it may be that this solitary reaper is remembering all her past deeds and etcetera 
and being enchanted by those past memories or being quite impressive about all these past memories she again and again reveals everything in her song in addition of her chorus next lines are there or is it some more humble lay familiar matter of today it means wordsworth has given only assumptions that uh, if she was not reciting this song regarding any battles long ago then it may be possible that uh, she is reciting this song taking into account the present continue uh, or we can say that uh, so here we can say that present continuous tense will be also the familiar matter or today it means today she has gone through some very impressive experience and due to this impression the song has been emerged automatically in her heart some natural sorrow loss or pain that has been and may be again these are also the assumption regarding the factors which were responsible for emerging this kind of melodious song in the heart of this solitary reaper now i am to discuss about the first stanza this very poem whatever the theme the maiden sang through this line wordsworth becomes quite unfamiliar he also is not interested to know more and more because the impression and the effect of melody of the song has made a very bewitching effect on him he is not interested in anything else now to know about he just wants to enjoy this song more and more i saw her singing at her work and all the sickle bending actually here is the expression that this solitary reaper is quite alone in the field says ripping the grains and after ripping says bending the grains alone so this is also the <coughs> description of about her chorus in the field i listened motionless and still and as i mounted up the hill it means after listening this song wordsworth has started his journey to go further and further on that uh, hill region and etc the music in my heart i bore long after it was heard no more it means in her, in his previous life wordsworth has not come into across such kind of melodious music that's why he has kept every memory of this melodious song in his heart and he is just murmuring in his heart he is just remembering every aspects of her song in his heart the most and powerful and striking element is in these four lines whenever we are casting glance at these four lines actually it is a direct message of william wordsworth to all the readers regarding the matter or regarding the manner how we should go through or how we should enjoy every poetry it means whenever we want to appreciate any poetry it can be justified in a proper manner only when or any poetry can affect the readers only when it is having some capacity to behold any reader as usual on the same place as our william wordsworth was stunned after hearing the beautiful line of this poems or after hearing the melodious song of this one so this line i listened motionless and still so here is the direct message 
for every students of literature if we want to enjoy every poetry then we should we should hire this stage of our phenomena that we should listen everything more than less and still it means we should involve ourselves totally or totality of aspects will be mingled we should forget ourselves whenever we are to hear any poetry then and then only we can understand it in a true manner and we can enjoy it in a true manner now after discussing about all these four stanzas i will discuss the whole poem critically Our, my first aspect of discussion is regarding the form the four eight lines eight line stanzas of this poem are written in a tight iambic tetrameter and wordsworth has followed this form strictly from the very beginning till the end of the poem each follows a rhyme scheme of a b a b c c d d though in the first and last stanzas the a rhyme is off it means this is exception but it does not disturb any glorification or we can say it does not disturb any melody or rhyme scheme of the poem now this is somewhat about sound so far as sound is concerned directly our mind strikes with two words vowels and consonants because sound is totally dependent upon the applications and repetitions of vowel and consonant sounds and through using particular type of vowels and consonant and by making some repetition of it wordsworth has made emphasis on unity and harmony etc because these features are quite necessary they are quite prominent for creating any harmonious effect in the poetry so far as its rhymes rhyming is concerned especially for example the repetition of ing it means ripping singing sing so this kind of ing will be also there so this gives us a true sense this gives us a proper sense of enjoyment whenever we are reciting this poem and etc there are some another sounds also example sorrow loss pain so this are, these are the suggestives of the repetitions of the vowels or listened more than less and still are another examples regarding a proper and selective usage of consonant sounds in this very poem now i would like to share something about meter the four eight line stanzas of this poem are written mainly in an iambic tetrameter each stanza is interrupted by a three footed third line which breaks down the long octave into digestible units therefore in this way william wordsworth invited the reader to pause at the points to pause at the point mean if wordsworth would not have followed this strict order of meter or of an iambic tetrameter then the poem was not able to give us such a magnificent effect because as i told you previously the poem can give us this kind of enchanting effect whenever it is possible for us to recite it or to sing it in a true manner and reciting and singing are always dealt with a proper dealt with the proper usage of sounds consonants rhyme and etc so in that case also form is also necessary to be followed by any poem and meter and form have always been the subjects of interest for the critics also in which manner the poem is written the answer is that it is written in the first person perspective it means 
first person perspective it means I and B and etc are the first person. So, it is not necessary to discuss it in more and the whole poem is written in present tense because that lady is quite present before William Wordsworth and William Wordsworth is just enjoying her melodious song remaining present in that region having the valley setting and etc. This is about some lexical features. Firstly, William Wordsworth used some obsolete words for example, behold because behold word has become so obsolete. Nowadays, we are not using this word in our day to day language or any another literature also, but Wordsworth can use it because Wordsworth was the master in poetic diction. So, at that time he remained very conscious whenever he was to write this poem because if he would have used the word or he would have used this kind of synonyms like Lu or she, then it would not have created such an imp uh, such a impressive way or it would not have created such an enchanting effect by reciting at the poem. So, behold word is quite set here and it comes at the very starting of the poem. Wordsworth has also used some German word like yon, well word is selected for valley, well profound is suggestive of word order in stanza 1, chaunt is used for sing. So, nowadays we are only saying that we are singing a song, not we are chaunting a song, but whenever Wordsworth has used this word chaunt, he has used it taking into account uh, every and every element of the rhyming schemes and form and etcetera. So, sometimes it happens with the poet that he has to follow some obsolete words also. Otherwise, the pattern of the meter, the pattern of following the form etcetera will be disturbed. So, there remains no option and he or she has to use this kind of obsolete words from either it is foreign language or any other. Numbers are used for lines and verses and lay it means ballad or songs. So, these are about these are the lexical features which are hidden in this very poem and this lexic lexical features must be quoted whenever we are to evaluate this poem critically. Another lexical feature we have to take into account is about uh, imperative sentence. It means there are number of imperative sentence in this poem especially in stanza 1. Behold her stop here or gently pass. It means there is some opposition here also that or listen with the imperatives the poet actually address readers directly. Therefore, the distance between the poet and the readers has been lessened. It means to, to lessen out the distance between the reader and poet all these selected phrases have been used by William Wordsworth. More importantly the inviting beginning in this poem naturally readers will follow the poet's direction to involve themselves into the tranquility of the scene and the sounds of the nature because that valley region is such a peaceful region where there is no another disturbance and in that kind of peaceful atmosphere this solitary reaper is enjoying to sing her song that is why the poet requests the bypassers that behold her it means do not disturb that lady let her enjoy her song with her work also. We can also find some examples of inverse sentences. So, we have to also take into account at the time of critical evolution of this poem. Inverse sentences appear mainly in staza. It means no nightingale did ever sound and voice so thrilling never was heard. We are quite familiar about the melody of the tone of nightingale, but the poet has told us that no nightingale did ever chant. 
and voice so thrilling never was heard it means that voice was thrilling also and was never heard also so there is quite oppositions established or manifested by william wordsworth by selecting these words arabian science and the fathers have brides as we know that in arabian sounds arabian sense we cannot find any nightingale but there prevail some oases so at that case we can see the glimpse of nightingale sometimes so to give us this reference wordsworth has used both this words arabian sense and for this hebrides actually hebrides is the name of the island this is about rhetorical questions one can notice that rhetorical questions are used in this poem all in stanza 3 since it is devoted to poet's wonders and speculation of the meaning of her song the poet could not help asking some question for instance will no one tell me what she sings this is the direct reference to that uh, scottish dialect or is it some more humble lay familiar matter of today it means this shows poet's eagerness to know that which subject matter has become responsible or which has found the expression in this melodious song sung by this solitary reaper that has been and may be again it means the poet's heart is such a, uh, has become such an eager heart that he wants to listen her so song repeatedly and repeatedly now i am to discuss about parallelism which is found in stanza 2 parallelism it introduced by two words no and among it means no word is giving us the glimpse of negative sentence but among is suggest that some someone is ab, someone is present there and no means not a single person is present there so this kind of parallelisms are also going on emphasizes the scottish girl's unique natural voice which can show that the poet was greatly impressed by the girl's voice in its own peculiar way in addition parallelism in poetry can make the poem sound more musical so all these are said the ornaments of a true and very good kind of poetry double negations are also found in this poetry actually it is also at the beginning of stanza 3 whenever we confront this lines will no one tell me what she sings why the poet used the double negation at the very beginning of the stanza 3 is that the intended to emphasize that what he appreciated most is the song stone and beauty of the nature so song stone and beauty of nature are more prominent features it means whatever has attracted our poet's heart is the tone of the song not the subject matter or not the content of the song the poet doesn't it is doesn't it doesn't matter for our poet that about which topic or about which idea the solitary reaper is revealing her song in her melodious way synonyms can also be found there or we can say that the theme of solitude and music throughout the poem are embodied by numerous synonyms if the poet is repeating only one word then it gives not it doesn't give us more and more impression and more and more good effect that's why the poet has used or applied a number of synonyms it also gives us the suggestion or it also gives us the idea about verse verse very vast vocabulary so these are the examples single solitary by herself alone etc sound notes voice numbers lay music are also the synonyms used for sound with this synonyms william wordsworth impressed the reader for the beauty of the sounds of nature moreover owing to the synonyms the poem in every sense consistent it means all 
these synonyms have added some particular kind of glory to this poem. Metaphor has been also used by the poet. So far as the metaphor is used, the poet compares the repo with the nightingale and cuckoo respectively. Uh, through the use of this metaphor, the poet has become succeed in making this poem uh, quite vibrant for the readers and uh, it is also full of rhyme and rhythm which has also attracted the every reader's heart. Apostrophe has been also applied by William Wordsworth. The apostrophe is a figure of speech in which an imaginary person or thing is addressed as if it were present and capable of understanding. It means we do not know either that solitary reaper is present or not or either that solitary reaper is one of the part of poet's imagination. In that sense, the poetic device apostrophe has been applied. This about theme of nature, the unity of man and nature. It means this solitary reaper is singing her song, her song living, in, living amidst the valley region and etc. The poet has, poet's heart has been attracted by that melodious song. So, here we can say that both Wordsworth and that solitary reaper were indulging in the realm of nature there. So, here we find the unity of man and nature. Another aspect of this unity is also visible that whenever this melodious song is sung by the solitary reaper, its echo, its echo is filling the valley by the thrilling sound. It means the physical aspect, it means the physical sound is just melting into the natural aspect of the valley. This is associated with singing birds also. So, solitary reaper is a human figure while nightingale and etc. are the birds. So, here also Wordsworth has established some particular kind of relationship between man and nature and being a preacher of nature. It is quite natural for Wordsworth to mingle all these aspects in such a manner. So far as imagination used in this poem Solitary Reaper is concerned, I would like to say that it is about the power of the imagination to transfer common everyday events into representations of larger reality. It means imagination may be there, reality may be there and sometimes what happen if the poet images something at a great extent then it also becomes reality whenever all this imagination in the form of emotions are penned down by him in the form of poetry. And the last theme which is also hidden in this very poetry is about sacred solitude. As I told you at the very beginning of the lecture that that solitary, that reaper, it means solitary reaper. So, solitary bird is the suggestive of this solitude. It means no one was there present to help her in her chorus of binding the grants or ripping the grants and etc. In the same manner, sacred solitude theme has been properly sub applied by William. Wordsworth. Such unsploit, unsurged and uncorruptible depiction of human beauty in the backdrop of sacred solitude is rare in English literature. It means no doubt a number of poets have written about solitude, but Wordsworth's style and Wordsworth's manner of expressing the glory of solitude is very and very different. And now, I would like to say some word about the style of language. Wordsworth's theory of poetic diction states that poetry should be written in the language of the common people because their language is not artificial and it is better integrated with their environment. Yes, the same is also applicable to this solitary reaper. Solitary reaper is a common human figure. 
and this common human figure has become responsible for the poet to emerge in his heart to this kind of poetry and etc. Has. He believed that the purest poetry is written in the simplest language. So, being a very common human figure, it is quite natural that whatever the words or whatever the diction that solitary reaper is using in her Scottish dialect is quite a natural one. It is not like bombastic or any other prudent language and etc. And that is why it can give more and more uh, solace effects or we can say that more and more comfortable setting to this poem also. So, this is about the lucid and simple style of William Wordsworth. So, thank you. Sandhan, all Gujarat integrated classroom. Satellite na madhyam thi jodti kadi, itle Sandhan.